And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Anytime you make a horse racing game, you're kind of in for, it. it's a difficult process because there are already a lot of good horse racing games out there. So you want to bring something new to the table. Here we have Home Stretch Race to the Finish by r, &R Games, uh, which I think is, uh, it, the thing that it's gonna bring to the table is simplicity, okay? This is a simple horse racing game, it's really easy. I could teach this to the people in, in less than a couple minutes and they can get up and run and understand how the game works. Um, it's somewhat abstracted from a horse racing game, but at the same time gives you that funness of betting on the game. Here it is. Right, the horses are ready to race. This is how the racetrack looks. Now, you'll notice that there is only nine spaces on the racetrack. There are 11 horses here, number two to 12. Those are the, the different combinations that you can roll on two six-sided dice. At the beginning of the game, players are going to be handed a hand of cards and they're going to be drafting ownership in the different uh, horses that are in the race. So you'll take a handful of cards, you'll pick one card and pass them the next player, pick one of those. And so you're going to have ownership in the different horses like Time's Up and Pants on Fire and this Disorder. And hey, these horses seem to have names that are the same as the other games in the R&R &R games line. Um, but anyhow, when you pick these horses, you're going to be picking the number. So obviously a seven horse is better than a two horse, which is why the seven horse costs $10,000 and the two horse costs $2,000. Once everyone has drafted their horses, they will then, everyone starts with $50,000 or 50 points essentially, and you'll move your markers back to however much the different horses that you bought cost, and then the game is ready to begin. Now the game takes place in four races. You have a deck of green cards for the first two races and a deck of purple cards for the last two races. And you'll draw two of each of those cards. And when a race begins, we turn over the first card. Now when we turn over a card, we're going to look and we're going to look at the different numbers on that card. And by the way, I believe purple races happen first, then green races. Um, but anyhow, so we, we take a look at the card, and here's a purple card, for example. Now this will show you the handicaps on the different horses. Horse 7 gets the red X handicap, so I'll take that red X and place that by horse 7, in front of horse 7. Horse 5 gets a plus 2 handicap, so I'll put that here by horse 5. Horse 12 gets a plus 4 handicap, and horse 3 gets a plus 6 handicap. So I place the handicaps essentially on the cards. The cards also show you how much money the winning horses get. 18, 12, and 6,000, that will be split amongst the players who have shares of those horses. So the race is ready to begin, but before the race happens, each player has five tokens of their color. So let's say I'm the red player, and these tokens are one, one, two, two, and three. And one at a time, players are gonna place these on the different horses. If you place it on win, that means you think that horse is gonna come in first place. If you place it on place, first or second, and if you place it on show, first, second, or third. And you can place these tokens out, and the first person to put them out uh, is, is always the person who's in the lead, and that person can only put one on a spot. The second person can stack them on top of other people's. They can go up to two high. And at the end of a round, after the horses have finished the race, if, for example, let's say horse three did win, then I would get three times 10. I would get 30,000. If horse two here showed, I would get one times eight and I would get 8,000. So players are gonna put these down and they're gonna be secret bets. You can see which horse people are bidding on, but you don't know what numbers that they put there. When the race begins, one player goes first, they roll two dice. They've rolled an 11. So horse 11, they have two choices here. They can move horse 11 one space or two spaces. If they move horse 11 two spaces, they one two, that's it. Their turn's over and they pass the dice to the next player. That person rolls a seven. Now seven has an X on him. So the first time seven goes, he doesn't move at all. So we just take that X away and that's that. So he could have decided to move seven two spaces there or he could have decided to move seven one space. If he had done that, which removes the X, he then can roll again, and the horse that he moves a second time, then 10 goes two. So then the next player goes and he rolls a seven. Seven, he can move seven two or one. He decides to move seven just one spot, 
And when we roll the dice, and whatever horse he rolls the second time goes two. And this is six, which goes two spots. So this continues, and you can see here, though, that if someone had rolled a 12, and they decide to move 12 two spaces, but there's a plus four here, so 12 would actually go one, two, three, four, five, six, shooting 12 way into the lead. Does that give 12 an automatic victory or horse three here, since horse three can go plus six? Well, not really, because you still, those numbers are harder to roll. Once you cross the finish line, let's say 12 wins the race. I would put the 12 horse here, and then let's say five came in second, I would put the five horse here, and four came in third, I'd put the four horse here. At that point, everybody would get paid out for people who own the horse. So they would get paid, depending on how many shares you have. And then people who had winning bets, so for example, four times two is eight, I would get $8,000 for bidding on horse five. At the end of the first round, we have some extra owner shares that we can put out on the board, and players all have a chance to buy some more shares in the horses. Then we have our second, third, and fourth race, and after the four races, whoever has the most money is the winner of the game. So home stretch there, you can see very simple game. I mean, obviously the twos and twelves move the slowest, the sevens, but there is that somewhat exciting, and you don't really have a lot of choices over the game. Uh, or, okay, you have choices, but they're not as many as you think. I mean, obviously, who you bet on is your choices. After that, you roll the die and say, I'll move this guy one, or I'll move him two. If I move him two, I roll again and hope for the best. I mean, if I move him one, I roll again and hope for the best for the second roll. Um, so it all comes down to really basically what shares of the horse, and will my horse win, and then will the horses I bet on win. So there's some entertaining things there. The game is fun. One really big thing I, th I feel very strongly about in this game is the game is four races. After three races, I think the, the, the time length of the game would have been just perfect. So when I play this in the future, I'm playing just three races. Um, because four races just took the, because you're doing the same thing each race. It's not like each race is that different, the, the way the horses start and things, but it doesn't really build on the previous races. So the fourth race is not nearly as, it's like, oh, we're doing this again. So I think the game kind of outlives its welcome a little bit. But three races is fine. And this game is very simple and easy. You know, this game actually reminds me a lot of a, an old classic from Sid Saxon called Can't Stop. Because it has that same thing. It's like, oh, well, I could try to get the 2 and 12 horse to win. And if they win, they win big. But man, I just got to hope I roll a 2 or 12 on these dice. And those little starting things, they're, they're kind of wonky. Like, why would a horse move eight spaces? He just... What happened? You know, got a bean burrito, shoots around the track. I don't know why that happens, but it makes for a good game, and it makes an entertaining game. So this game can play up to six players, which I think is a, a positive thing, and I think it plays better with the full amount. Two players, you know, wow, we're racing our horses. But there's that excitement, and, that, and anyone likes an excitement where you stand up and you roll the dice and you hope that you roll the number, and that's cool and all, and there's that you never know which horse will win, and after a while, a lot of people, when I play, they stop, they stop uh, betting on horses placing because if, even if the horse wins, ooh, I got three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, you want the horse to win. <laughs> Who cares about the place and show? You want the horse to win. So, I don't know. It's entertaining. It's small. It's light. There are certainly better horse racing games out there, uh, but this one fits a niche in that it's easy to teach, put away, set up. I mean, it's really simple and light. And if you're looking for something like that, then home stretches the game for you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door!